In Japan, VR MMORPGs reach new heights of sophistication, with players experiencing the game through all five senses and NPCs behaving like real humans. Hiroshi Yuki realizes he does not have enough money to purchase the latest game, so he goes to a smaller store to see if he can find it for a lower price. Riona Kisaragi, the manager, dupes him into purchasing a 10-year-old game called Kiwain Quest by pointing out its higher-than-average rating. When he first enters the game as his character, Hiro, he is struck by how realistic the world appears. His first quest is to leave Ted and find Flora Castle, but his childhood friend NPCs, Alicia and her brother Martin, inform him that leaving the city is illegal and try to prevent him from doing so. Hiro is irritated when Martin punches him, and he feels the pain, so he pushes and accidentally kills Martin, disturbing him with how realistic it all appears. Alicia goes insane, so he flees to the city, where he meets Riona dressed as a fairy. She is astounded to discover that he has already ruined his chances of becoming the hero by earning the moniker Best Friend Killer. Riona explains that the game was designed to be completely realistic, so there is no starting over. Riona suggests Hiro seek assistance from Jinji, a player who also murdered Hiro's best friend NPC. Enrique. Hiro realizes that being a murderer has gameplay consequences. Alicia reappears, and Riona explains that Alicia is a skilled knife user, and that most players would make her a permanent teammate. But since Martin was killed, this option is no longer available. Hiro is able to log out after Riona, who is invisible to NPCs, attacks Alicia's eyes. Hiro's friend Takafumi advises him at school that if he stops playing games, his bullies may leave him alone. When Hiro logs back in, he finds Jinji, a middle-aged drunk who reveals he killed his best friends without realizing his actions were irreversible and he still hasn't won after 10 years of gameplay. He advises Hiro to learn martial arts in real life because their characters are based on their real bodies. He also tells him about Kamui, the player who won the game. Then, claiming that it will help, Jinji removes Hiro's disguise, revealing him as the wanted murderer. Jinji tells Hiro that if he admits to killing Martin, he will have to serve a real prison sentence. Martin's ghost appears in prison and decides to haunt Hiro until he remembers their childhood promise, which Hiro has no recollection of. Hiro realizes Jinji is haunted by his best friends in the same way. Hiro is then rescued by a young woman named Mizorisa. The game warns him that he is about to undergo intense stimulation, and he agrees, thinking he and Ms. Orisa will have sex, only to discover she is the town inquisitor. She explains that if he confesses, he will be imprisoned, but if he is tortured, he will be released. Finally, Riona appears, explaining that if he does not want to be treated as a murderer for the duration of the game, he must endure the torture. Mizorisa prepares to amuse himself by chopping off his legs and arms, but the torture is abruptly halted. When Riona examines Hiro's title, she realizes that by wetting his pants in fear, Hiro unintentionally unlocked a previously unknown skill and storyline that prevents the torture. While Riona is overjoyed, Hiro furiously quits the game and vows never to play again. Hiro recalls tripping and inadvertently wetting himself during his first high school race. An Olympic medalist in the audience, Mike McLachlan, identified his lack of mental strength and advised him to look inward. As a result, Hiro dropped out of the track team and became a target for bullies. In the present, his sister criticizes him for abandoning the game simply because it became difficult. He goes to Riona's shop to return the game after bullies take his money again. She does, however, inform him of Soikairo Kamui, a local politician who attributes his personal success to the lessons he learned from winning the game. She then shows Hiro a walkthrough Kamui made, 
but no one used it because Camille was unbearably rude as a teenager. Pyro learns that he must defeat Alicia without fighting, obtain a sword, allow Martin to haunt him, and begin acquiring items because shops in the game can and will run out of necessary items. Riona persuades Hyro to keep playing by promising to marry him if he wins the game. Hyro returns to the unknown storyline, while Mizorissa decides Hyro is her favorite victim ever and hopes to torture him again. Tesla, the captain of the city guard, explains that he is declaring Martin's death an unfortunate accident and thus Hyro is released. Unfortunately, because of the realism, Alicia still seeks vengeance, and the villagers continue to believe he is guilty. Hyro approaches Jinji for a loan in order to purchase necessary items. Hyro loses his cool when Jinji refuses. Hyro is then visited by Martin's ghost, who reminds him of what happened the last time he was enraged. The ghosts of Jinji's childhood friends appear to speak to him as well, though Hyro is unable to see or hear them. Riona persuades Jinji that the fight was a duel, so he hands over his gold and Hyro's title changes. Hyro goes to an item shop run by Melissa after deciding he needs smoke bombs to defend against Alicia only to discover that he is still being charged inflated prices. He tries to retrieve the sword with which he should have begun the game, but Alicia is waiting for him. When attempting to use a smoke bomb, Hyro forgets that, due to the realism, he must first light the fuse. Alicia attempts to murder him, but he is saved by Mizorisa, who refuses to allow Alicia to murder her favorite victim. Alicia outperforms expectations by knocking Mizorisa unconscious. Hyro gropes her breasts, remembering he is supposed to defeat Alicia without fighting. But due to the realism, she reacts like a real woman and grows angrier. Martin's ghost appears to aid Alicia in killing him prompting Hyro to make a love confession. Alicia, his childhood friend, reveals her conflict and flees. Hyro realizes Alicia is unaware she is a game character and believes he is her beloved childhood friend. And despite the fact that Martin's death was an accident, he fled like a coward rather than grieve with her. Hyro, realizing the purpose of Kamui's walkthrough, asks Martin to continue haunting him revealing one of his character's childhood memories. Martin forgives Hyro and departs for the afterlife after learning that his childhood promise was that he and Martin would remain friends forever. When Hyro's title is changed to something slightly better, Riona believes he will have another chance to become the hero, starting with having his rusted sword repaired. They then notice that the city is on fire, something Riona has never seen before. The blacksmith informs Hyro that goblins are attacking. Riona issues a warning. Hyro goblins are incredibly powerful, and if he dies, his game console will be permanently disabled as a realism penalty. When Hyro asks if any of the players have ever defeated a goblin, Riona reveals that Kamui and Shohei have, with the latter being a boxing champion named Shohei Ada who publicly admitted defeating a goblin was more difficult than defeating a real-life human opponent. Hyro instructs Riona to distract a goblin in order to save a young girl NPC who resembles his sister. Hyro unlocks a super speed skill based on his real-life running ability and saves her when the goblin nearly kills her. Tesla then arrives and kills the goblins, revealing to Riona that he is one of the game's most powerful NPCs. Hyro is furious when he discovers that saving the girl has added added Lolita Complex to his title. Hyro accepts Tesla's offer to join the city guard as a mercenary before logging out. Later, while watching Kamui's walkthrough, Hyro discovers that doing so is the worst option in game because the survival rate is only 0.1%, implying that there is a 99.9% .9 chance Hyro's console will be destroyed if he continues playing. Hyro discovers that despite keeping his childhood promise and defeating Alicia without fighting, he now has a zero rating. He has a 5% chance of survival if he survives Tesla's intense five-day training 
and the second goblin attack. Iroh then informs Keed that he is not quitting and will be staying in the game for five days. When he returns, Tesla introduces Hyro to Queen Govern, the city's enthusiastic ruler. Hyro later meets Granada and Palu, two mercenary recruits like himself, as well as Kathy and Bob, soldiers who help train recruits. Amos, the soldier who initially arrested him for Martin's murder, is his primary trainer. Hyro fails miserably against Amos and realizes that, like his physical body, he has no fighting ability, so he is shunned. Hyro oversleeps and arrives late for his second day of practice, so Amos assigns him to practice alone. Hyro is mocked by Granada and Palu for being a friend killer and a weak soldier, but Kathy offers to train with him and teach him the fundamentals. Hyro is beaten in a duel on the third day by Granada, who, along with Palu, continues to mock him. Hyro notices how similar they are to his real-life bullies. Riona refers Hyro to the city guard's counselor for depression treatment, but the counselor criticizes Hyro for his lack of combat skills. When Kathy suggests that Hyro pray for guidance, all that happens is that a nun douses him in holy water. Palu viciously beats him on day four and warns Kathy that if she is Hyro's friend, he and Granada will beat her as well, so Kathy rejects Hyro. The next day, Granada is so badly pranked that he quits. Tesla later shows up with a letter purportedly from Palu, claiming Amos was behind the pranks. Tesla demands to know what has been going on, and Kathy reveals the bullying that Hyro has been subjected to, as well as how Amos, the recruits, and herself have done nothing to stop it. As a result, Amos is fired by Tesla and Kathy, and the recruits apologize to Hyro. That night, Riona reveals to Hyro that the pranks were her idea, causing his title to change as if it were his fault. Despite his poor training, Hyro decides to fight the second goblin assault, even if it means destroying his console. Riona decides to reveal the true reason she wants him to keep playing as a reward for his bravery. Riona reveals that Kamui once rejected her in game because her breasts were too large, so she vowed to marry someone who finished the game as petty revenge. When Hyro logs out, he discovers that Keed is becoming increasingly concerned about him. After reviewing the walkthrough, Kamui advises Hyro to stop relying on it and instead fight. Tesla announces that Granada and Palu have been replaced by Mizorisa and Alicia and assigns them to patrol the evacuated city with Hyro. Alicia and Mizorisa apprehend a thief who admits that a crime boss ordered the thieves to steal as much as they could before the goblins arrived. When they break into the thief's headquarters, they discover that the boss is Jinji. Hyro, irritated by Jinji's selfishness, insists on fighting him alone, only for Alicia to defeat Jinji in order to save time. Jinji is impressed with Alicia and regrets killing both of his childhood friends, but he is happy to go to prison because prison cells are not attacked. The goblins attack, and Hyro needs to use the restroom again despite having already done so. A goblin confronts an unprepared Hyro while he is in the bathroom. Mizorisa decapitates the goblin and proposes to Hyro. Hyro is able to flee after Alicia interrupts them, but he needs to use the restroom once more. Riona asks about his past, so he explains what transpired. Riona teases him about it, which irritates him relieving his stomach ache but changing his title to reflect his bathroom habits. Hyro suspects the Goblin King One-Eye is the reason the mission has a 0.1% survival rate when he invades Queen Govern's palace. To distract One-Eye, Tesla brings in three captured goblins. Hyro realizes they have been kidnapped for a long time based on several clues. When Tesla murders One-Eye, he admits that he captured the goblins seven years before and that one eye was their father. When Govern arrives, they reveal that goblins are actually intelligent and peaceful, but terrifying when enraged. As a result, they used it to their advantage, scaring people away from leaving and entering Ted, allowing them to rule the city completely unopposed. Tesla murders his men to conceal the truth, 
leading Hiro to realize Tesla is the true final boss he must defeat, Felicia defends Hiro after deciding to forgive him and is assassinated. Hiro then uses his speed to defend himself against Tesla. Kamui's walkthrough reveals that the player's strong emotions temporarily negate realism. Hiro outwits Tesla and stabs him, only for his sword to snap. Just as Tesla is about to strike, Hiro's soul travels to meet Martin who offers to help Hiro. When Hiro returns, he discovers that his broken sword has become a cursed best friend killer blade. Hiro is about to kill Tesla when he wakes up in his room, having forgotten about Govern, who bumped him from behind, allowing Tesla to kill him and destroy his console. Hiro is depressed when he notices a new section of Kamui's walkthrough that informs him of a way to resume the game an hour before his death. Hiro decides to spend an entire month preparing and begins exercising, lifting himself out of his depression, becoming closer to his sister, and even standing up to his bullies inadvertently. Hiro realizes that Kamui experienced the same thing, which gives him hope. Riona lends Hiro a new console a month later, and he returns to the game. Like and subscribe. See you on the next one.